Okay, let's roll right into our post race with our winning team. Today's 44th annual Good Sam Roadside Assistance 500 here at Talladega Super Speedway. And our race winner is Matt Kenseth. He drove the number 17 Ford EcoBoost National Breast Cancer Foundation Ford for Roush Fenway Racing. He's joined up front here by team owner Jack Roush and crew chief Jimmy Finnick. This is Matt's 23rd career win in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. His first win at Talladega. It's his second win here at a restrictor plate track in 2012. And uh, Matt, uh, take us through uh, this 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 win here today. Certainly a shot in the arm for the 17 team. And uh, you know, yet another uh, example of just the uh, just the talented racer and race team that you guys have over there. Yeah, thanks. I mean, uh, you know, plate racing is, is really a, a testament to everybody at, at Roche Fenway Racing, the guys that build these cars and put bodies on them, and uh, Jimmy and all the guys that set them up and work on them in the pit crew, and, and certainly everybody at, uh, at the engine shop, Doug Yates and all them guys. So uh, plate racing, especially Talladega, is, you know, has always been about a, a, a fast race car, not necessarily a good handling one, or um, I never felt like the driver was uh, – you know, a, a, a huge factor. So uh, certainly this win is really about them guys uh, a lot more than me, but uh, glad to get them the win. Um, the plate stuff has just been unbelievable this year. All, all four plate races, they put me in a position to win, and I really felt like I let them down here last time on the move I made or didn't make. And at Daytona, again, you know, we had a shot to win that thing and messed it up at the end and got beat by, uh, got beat by Tony. So I'm really, uh, really proud to be uh, being in victory lane with these guys. Uh, they worked on it hard today. We had a, a up and down day. We uh, had a couple uh, near misses on the track and had to work our way back through the pack two or three times. Uh, it, we had the car pretty loose, pretty pretty tough to drive at times. So uh, uh, glad it all worked out for us at the end. Okay, Crew Chief Jimmy Finnick, uh, talk about today's uh, race and maybe how things looked up from your vantage point here this afternoon. Well, uh, all weekend we were struggling with a little bit of speed and it's. Uh, Today we ended up uh, with the car on a little bit on the free side, and uh, we tried adjusting it out, but we really couldn't get it out. So Matt did an awesome job. Uh, as you all seen him going down on the apron there to save that thing, but uh, it was a good race. Uh, I feel bad for him to have to drive it that free, but uh, at the end uh, we ended up with the trophy. Owner Jack Roush, uh, talk about this win here today. Uh, certainly, uh, again, it's just a testament to the. Uh, hard work and the uh, overall organization that uh, that you have over there. We've got uh, great sponsors and we've got uh, great uh, technical support behind our, our race cars and we've not won as many races as we should this year. F certainly this in my 25 years this has been the best year we've had at restricted plate racing unless I misinformed Matt has led uh, leading into uh, going into the final lap of uh, every restricted plate race we've had this year. He, he's uh, won two and come up uh, come up a little short on the other two. Uh, it's great to be here with the uh, with the Breast Cancer Foundation, with with uh, the Echo Boost Ford uh, Fusion, and with uh, Best Buy and and uh, and uh, 3M and and uh, not 3M, but Best Buy and uh, Fifth Third, and uh, with Cest as well. Uh, you know, it's Jimmy Fennig is uh, is really good at uh, at his trade, and uh, when he rose uh, his car into the tech line, uh, I've got every confidence that he's gotten every bit of consideration that the tech people will allow. And uh, he gets the speed out of the cars where a lot of people couldn't. But uh, Matt did a nice job today. As I said, he uh, had a couple of occasions where he could have uh, wound up on his roof or on his side, and he managed to, to have the presence to be able not to do that, presence and skill not to, not to let that happen, and, there, and he wound up in the victory circle. Let's go to the press box for our first question. Go ahead. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports, congratulations. Um, Matt, how would you just – your strategy going into a race like this? I mean, do you, you race just to wait for the finish to go to win, or are you just racing for surviving? Um, yeah, that's a that's kind of an easy question. Um, I don't I don't have a strategy when I go in, except for the same as every other race. So when they went to, uh, you know, I don't know how many years ago it was, but when they went to them strips on the roof and everything, it, it, it drastically changed restrictor plate racing. It used to be, you know, when I started here, um, it was very difficult to pass if you could stay lead and stand the bottom. It was hard for people to pass here. There was no pushing in tandems, and there wasn't any of that. And and since the evolution of changing these cars and you know making them where we can pass better and and are in a bigger pack and all that stuff, you know the first couple of years we always tried to make a strategy. Let's all hang in back. Let's uh, let's go up front. But if it looks scary, let's go to the back. And um, honestly, I just got tired of it. 
So I think Jimmy and I talked about it, I think, last July or something before Daytona. And we just decided, you know, them, them, them fans pay a lot of money to watch us race. Um, you know, these guys pay me money to drive the race car fast. We just go out and race hard every lap. You know, we go try to qualify the best we can, go up, try to lead the most laps if we can, and put ourselves in a position to win the race and, and uh, not really worry about all that. As you saw today, and you've seen a lot of times, there is no safe place. Tony was, was leading, or I might have just passed him, I might have been second, uh, when he got wiped out. So, I mean, you, you got to go race sooner or later. Last lap is, a, is the last lap, and everybody's, you know, trying to, trying to get to the front. So um, I'd rather already be there if we can be. Come downstairs for questions. Ed, I believe you had one. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Matt, Jimmy just said he felt bad that you had to drive that car that free all day long. But when you really come down to it, wasn't having to drive that car that free exactly what kind of forced you into the lane that helped you escape from all this mess? Yeah, it kind of did. You know, we... Uh you know, the second to last run, I was on the bottom there, and I think we were leading, and Jamie was behind me, and, and he was trying to push me down the back a little bit and, and bump me a little into three and uh, about about wiped out and uh, had to move up the track and, and lost a lot of momentum in a lot of spots. So I knew at the end I couldn't be on the bottom with cars outside of me and cars pushing me, especially through the trial level that I just I, – I knew that we get wrecked because the last lap people are going to try to push you all the way around the track because it's, uh, it's, you know, it's the last lap. So um, – when we got way out in the lead coming to the white, I just kind of sized up the lanes behind me. And I didn't want a lane to go real fast by me on the bottom, but I decided, uh, you know, not to go to the bottom. I was going to try to grab the middle guy, and that was uh, and that was Kevin. He was kind of, you know, Tony was out front a little farther than him, but he was lower, so I just kind of moved up in front of, uh, you know, Kevin, and uh, it all worked out. Let's go here with Tom. Hi, guys. Congratulations. Tom Jensen, Speed.com. <laughs> Jack, you're a businessman costs a lot of money to run these cars, run these teams. Does it cringe when you come here knowing the investment it takes to build these cars and knowing there's a pretty good chance you're going to come home with a lot of them torn up? Well, I'm real conflicted about restrictor plate racing. You know, it's the it's NASCAR's marquee. The high banks of Daytona and Talladega <clears throat> are the have, have built a foundation under, uh, under a lot of their promotions, and a lot of fans uh, relate to, particularly to these to these racetracks but the driver and the crew and their strategies that you can uh, you can organize yourself for have got less <clears throat> less to do with keeping you out of harm's way than they do at a, at a short track or intermediate sized track so I, I really just uh, figure that cars are right off whenever I've loaded up in the truck to bring it to, to one of these restricted plate races and if we've got the speed we've had this year well then you can miss most of the wrecks but if uh, if you're caught back in the middle there, you're uh, you're 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 certainly in jeopardy and and have a little to do with it, a uh, little to protect yourself with. As Carl was not able to protect himself today. Other questions downstairs? Back in the back there, right there, Mark, and then Bob. Yeah. Mark Allman, NASCAR.com for Matt. You had a couple of moments today. How do you regroup at you when you get in that kind of situation where you know you're you're fishtailing the car, trying to keep it going and in one in the right direction and all that. And uh, you know, how how quickly does that just leave your mind because you've got to concentrate on getting getting back up there? Yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, I've I've probably uh, you know, I have faster cars, so it makes you make better decisions. But I think that that have probably gained maybe just a little bit of patience over the years. And a couple of times we get. Hung out. It's so easy to, you know, just say, okay, well, I'm gonna go drive it out there three wides. I got a huge run catching the pack, and you know, go over ten miles an hour faster, and you drive out there and pass about five rows, and then you stall out, and they all pass you back. So, um, just had to be really patient two different times. We made ourselves back to the lead. I just had to uh, the middle work pretty good with for me most of the day. And there was one time uh, I don't know. It seemed like it, it seemed like it took forever. I don't know my laps. It seemed like it took a half or three quarters of a fuel run, you know, to get back up there. And uh, my car was really fast. And if I was patient enough with it and waited waited for the holes and had the right people around me, you know, I could kind of I could kind of make it happen and get in a decent position. Let's go, Bob. Uh, Bob Pocker, Sporting News. Um, on the first lap of the green white checker, <clears throat> did you think you had? forced uh, Clint below the yellow line or did you think while well, you're the leader you could do it or were you just racing and you had no clue what was going to whether you had done anything to him that might cause NASCAR to react I didn't even think of that until you just said it um, honestly uh, I thought I was clear and um, you know we, we had a pretty good running outside I knew it was going to be close and I thought we were clear and I looked and I started moving and I kept moving I didn't feel anything and we're all the way to the yellow line before we even touched and as soon as we touched you know I moved back up 
um, you know, but he was already slowed down just enough. So I, I don't really know what happened. I don't know if I was clear and I didn't. I was a little bit indecisive and moved too slow, you know, to make sure I got in front of him or uh, or he was there the whole time. I'm not really sure. I, I'd have to honestly watch it. Everything happened so fast there at the end. Other questions? He's got one back here in the back. Go ahead, Stan. <coughs> Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Matt, if you if you could please, if 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 step one is you take the lead, how, how did you find out that there was a wreck happening behind you? Was it radio or did you see it? And and at what point did you know? Okay, this is mine. This is victory. Well, I saw um, Tony's back bumper. I saw him getting spun out. I don't know how that happened or how he got in that position, but I saw him spinning out. And then, uh, you know, we were clear of him. You know, I didn't know if Kevin was still back there. And, uh, you know, you check your mirror a lot of these places. I looked in the mirror, and honestly, there was there was nobody back there. So I thought we had a, um, you know, I thought that it was our, our race then. So I uh, just kind of slowed down and, and got it back uh, to the finish. And can I follow with a question for Jack, please? Sure. Okay. Jack, one of the greatest drivers you've ever had to drive for you, and he won't be here next year sitting side by side with you how much does this victory mean from a historical standpoint from from your relationship with him to you well i, I hope it's not the last race we win together uh but uh, it wasn't my choice that uh, we would end our relationship uh this year but it is what it is and uh i'll take what i can get between now and then and i will uh, remember it with uh, great pride and satisfaction Go up to the press box. Any questions in the press box? No questions. Back downstairs, anything else for uh, Jack, Matt, or Jimmy?